afternoon and welcome to Bistex Asian Midday Market Watch. It's the 25th of September on a Monday and as, as usual, our Monday guest is Vishnu Bharadan, Head of Economics and Strategy from Mizuho Bank, coming to us out of Singapore. Now, Vishnu, as always, lovely to have you on the show this Monday. Always my pleasure, Brian. Uh, good to start the week with you. Now, Vishnu, before we get your insights, we're going to take a look and see how markets across the region have performed in the first half of the day. But we will start with cryptocurrency first. Uh, Bitcoin is at 26,149, down 1.6%. Ethereum is at 1,578. It's uh, up marginally at 0.88%. Now, looking across the regional equity markets, we're going to start close to home where you're at. Vishnu, the Straits Times Index is up 0.21%. Bursa, Malaysia, the KLCI is down 0.5%. Shanghai is down 0.39%. The ASX All Ordinaries is down 0.11%. The Nikkei is up 0.85%. The Hang Seng is down 1.4%. And rounding out the numbers, we've got the Kospi, which is down 0.45%. Vishnu, pretty much a sea of red with the exception of the Nikkei. Tell us why. Well, it does look like, uh, you know, the markets are, are still trying to shake off uh, some of the central bank uh, dent that came about last week, primarily from the Fed, because the Fed, despite the pause, uh, or rather the skip, uh, came across being hawkish, having lifted where they see rates for next year. So markets are having to deal with the prospects uh, and uh, quantified prospects of higher for longer rates. That's certainly impacting them. Uh, Bank of England was, uh, you know, in, in a quirky fashion, a different story. They were expected to hike, but they held back. And that somewhat revealed, uh, to some extent, the stagflation type of dilemma that the Bank of England has to grapple with. And that also reflects uh, the broader scheme of things in terms of global risk, where we still have uh, fairly high cost shocks, uh, whereas demand recovery is not quite there. Uh, so there are spots of fragilities, and, and that's what markets are also concerned about. Let's not forget that's China. There's been some optimism about some of the uh, stimulus measures they've put through, but to the extent that it's, it continues to be uh, in, in drips and draps, uh, a lot of that optimism is also fading off. So markets are really now on a cautious mode, uh, wary of high rates, uh, not convinced that there will be enough stimulus to revive demand. Uh, and that's where we, we, we see markets with the uh, with the BOJ and, 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 and the Nikkei, uh, the BOJ held back uh, from a calibrated tightening that markets expected that has weakened the yen somewhat, but not excessively because markets are quite cautious of intervention risks. So to some degree, uh, that may perversely be uh, a little bit of a recovery mode for Nikkei because of the weak yen, which is supportive of the Nikkei, uh, and, and the BOJ maintaining uh, somewhat accommodative stance, uh, but even then, to keep things in perspective, none of the markets have recouped all the losses from from last week. So it's, it's still in a cautious mode. Now, uh, uh, Vishnu, then on on the other side, you're talking about risks that are just out there. One of the key things is obviously the sh potential shutdown of government in the U.S. Tell us about that and and what the risks are really to the market. But I, I think markets are not overly, uh, uh, you know, paralyzed by this, and and nor are they in a state of panic yet. Uh, but just because you've averted the, those two P's doesn't mean that there won't be some pain. Uh, and and that's really where we are with the markets because there's been no resolution, uh, and and no bipartisan, uh, you know, middle of the road kind of solution. And if nothing gets signed or resolved, then first October, you could start to see. Uh, some of the non-essential services being suspended. So a partial shutdown, uh, uh, which may then broaden uh, for the U.S. government. We've, we saw this, we've seen this before uh, in the Trump administration. I think it lasted almost 40 days uh, in, the, in the impasse uh, over the, the, the building of the wall. If that comes about, there could be concerns that amidst high interest rates, uh, some of the uh, you know, the, the, the suspension of wages and the suspension of, of activity uh, might snowball into a bigger downside recession risk. So that's certainly one angle of risk there. Uh, but in the meantime, whilst they're watching for these risks and how policy might respond to that, 
uh, markets may also want to be by the sidelines, not taking on too much risk. So what that may play out as is, as they watch uh, for things to come around, uh, you don't get a lot of recovery in equities, uh, yet the dollar doesn't fall a lot, uh, nor do yields. Uh, basically, more markets are watching. And so it's a very, it underpins the cautious mode this week as we roll into October. Now, looking ahead, what are the key things this is a Monday? What are the key things that we should be watching out for as investors that could potentially move markets? I, I think, you know, one of the things about this week is that uh, a lot of it might be headline driven uh, and, and not entirely scheduled. So that's one aspect of it. Uh, the other is we want to watch out for some of the data coming out like uh, USPC data because then uh, markets will marry this up with the Fed's view and see whether that means more tightening or less. Uh, we've got uh, in you know we've got to watch out for Australia's CPI coming out whether that leads to some swings in the uh, Aussie dollar. We've got the Bank of Thailand meeting in in the region. We we widely expect like the other uh, Asian central banks last week, Bank Indonesia and the Philippine Central Bank to stay on hold, but to keep the option of a hike on the table, given that the Fed has done likewise. So you could see a lot of that kind of position, uh, positioning and posturing without major moves. Uh, but we cannot discount the headline risks and we continue to watch out for uh, any more headlines from China as well. So these are perhaps the big moving parts as, as markets from their side of the eyes look out for any signs of a compromise between uh, Republicans and Democrats in the US over the, the, the spending, uh, you know, a tussle that could lead to a, to, to, to a shutdown of the government. Now, on that note, David, uh, 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 Vishnu, thank you very much for your insights. Thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thanks, Brian. Now, we've been speaking to Vishnu Varadhan, Head of Economics and Strategy at Mizuho Bank on Vistax Asian Midday Market Watch. I'm Brian Fernandez. Check out this show on our website, www.vistax.asia, as well as our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Mm -hmm.